<laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> oh my goodness. Do you drink this? Do you drink your milk out of the cereal bowl? Come on, you know what I'm yeah, talking about? Yeah, or do you yeah. throw the milk away? <laughs> Let me tell you, when I when I do it, I take it and I slurp it. Right on out the bowl. And now I'm teaching my grandson. The other day he jumped up in my lap and sat up on my lap and he, he said, whoa, cereal. I start feeding him some of the cereal I'm eating. And when I got done, I took some of the milk. He said, I want milk. So I took, I tipped the bowl up for him. And I said, is that good? He said, that good. <laughs> yeah. But in our text, we see here that if you go back and you read from verse 1, that this woman was left in a condition, not of her own fault, but put in a condition because a man had died. When he died, he left the wife penniless. She had no husband. She had no money. She had no food. She had no income. There was no government program to apply to. There were no prospects for improvement. There was no hope in this widow woman. But all she had was two sons, and the creditors wanted to come and take the son. Now, the taking of the son was a way of payment. My goodness, I wish uh, I could just take a couple of my kids and give them to the creditors. <laughs> And pay off my debt. I mean, yeah. uh, I'll see you in seven years, son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm sorry about that, children. But I'm, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Too late. <laughs> I already came, already came out, of the, out of the abundance of the heart to mouth speech, right? <laughs> so, but the creditors were about to come and take them as slaves. It was the law that allowed this, that the children could become legal payment. So even though she was about to lose everything, even her children, she had one more thing, and the only thing that she had was a roof over her head and a pot of oil. Now that pot of oil represented money back in the day. If you had oil, you could sell that oil. If you had oil, you could trade that oil. It was a way that, that, with that oil, but all she had was just a little bit of oil. Every other pot, cookie jar, sugar bowl, everything was empty. She had nothing left. You see, what I want you to ask yourself today is you might feel like you're empty, but what do you have left? What is there? Is there a little bit of something left in you that you can squeeze out? God is trying to raise up a people that's just, that is asking for just that little bit, and he can take that little bit and change something around. But he just had a little bit. See, every other pot in the house was empty. Every vessel, every jar, every cupboard, every pocket, every purse. You know, the other day I went in to get some money out of my pocket, and I dropped some lint. <laughs> I know what it's like to have no money in your purse. Amen. I know what it's like to look into your sugar jar and not have sugar. I know what it's like to not have something. When we go to Africa, when we speak of these things, you can believe that most people that you're preaching to are going home that have nothing. They have no food. They don't know where their next meal is going to come from. And when we went over there, we preached. And I began to say, and even now, God is about to fill your jars. Even now, God is about to fill your house. Even now, God is sending somebody with food. You saw God just move on the people, and they started screaming out, and they started crying out. And God began to fill their spirit with hope. Amen. Amen. But in her emptiness, in her nothingness, she went to the prophet Elijah. And she learned something about nothing. Mm -hmm. 
See, I really believe in our nothingness, in our emptiness, God wants to teach us something. I know it wasn't until I got to the lowest point where I felt like nothing, where I had nothing, where everything was stripped away that I then cried out and said, okay, God, now I have nothing, now fill me. Amen. See, it's in that emptiness. It's in that time that we have nothing that God will take the heart of a sinner and turn it back to him. It is a time that he'll take the prideful Christian and, and take and turn them back to them in the emptiness. Sometimes people got to get empty before they can be filled. Amen. So when you see somebody struggling, you don't need to worry about their struggle. Maybe God's right in the middle of their struggle trying to squeeze that last little bit of self out of them so that they can get filled again. Amen. See, it's just like my wife's telling me, oh no, we're not throwing that tube away until it's completely empty. Oh no, we're not going to get rid of that little bit of liquid soap until it's completely empty. Then when it's completely empty, then I'll give you a new one. You see, God is looking for empty vessels to empty themselves completely that God could fill you anew. Amen. Uh, so, she went to the prophet and she learned something of her nothingness. What God can do with an empty vessel is about to be Something that she'll learn and never forget. You see, I've never seen a miracle made where there was not a miracle needed. I've only seen miracles done where there was a need for a miracle. You know what I'm saying? I've only seen God move where there are needs. See, if we don't feel like we have a need, if we don't feel like God can do it, if we don't feel like we're going to let God do it and we want to continue to be in control and be disobedient to God's word, then guess what's going to happen? Nothing. It's in our emptiness. It's in our desire. It's in our hunger for God to do something in our life that God begins to do it. That's why the prophet was without honor in his own hometown because there wasn't a desire. The people weren't empty enough to say, fill me God. So he had to go somewhere else that they believed that he was the Son of God, that their emptiness could be filled. So, verse 3 talks about being empty. Empty is really the key of the story. The prophet didn't tell her to go and try and borrow some food from a neighbor. That's our first inclination, didn't it? When we don't have something. He, did, he didn't say to go borrow from the neighbor. Oil was like money back then. He didn't tell him to go get money. He didn't tell him to go get a loan. He said to go and borrow as many empty jars as possible. Now how crazy is that? Could you imagine coming to the pastor and say, Pastor, I need $10 for gas to get home. And I look at you and say, how much gas do you have? $100 of gas. $100. <laughs> and then I said, okay, you got that much gas. This is what I want you to do. I want you to go gather every gas can that your car can carry. And then I began to tell you, bring them back. You would look at me. And you would probably start looking around here like, is there, is it, does, does he got a, a, a gas tank around here somewhere? Let, let, let me look out back. Is there a pump over there? You going to fill up these things? Now get as many as you can get. Now if you really knew that I would fill up everything that you brought, you would bring back a tanker truck, wouldn't you? Yeah. Bring back everything. You, you would be standing at the gas station and say, wait a minute, follow me. You, you would go over here and you would say, come on, follow me. You would go over here and this one and say, wait a minute, is that 
You see what I'm saying? Don't, don't go and eat. Go get a few jars. Go get a few jars. I'm, I, I'm going to give you just enough to pay the debt. I'm going to do just enough in your life to get you through this storm. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do just enough in your life to make you happy for three more days. To give you peace for another week. To give you joy for another six months. No, we don't serve a God like that. He tells Elijah the prophet, the man of God, says go and get many jars as much as you can get. Amen. Now I would have had so many jars, I wouldn't have been able to shut my door. They'd have been inside, they'd have been lying outside. But see, we don't know these things until we go through these things. That's right. Amen. 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 So it was like the prophet Elijah was saying to the lady, you've got a lot of emptiness in your life, but not enough emptiness. <laughs> Come on, somebody needs to get this this morning. She had nothing, but what he was telling her is you don't have enough of nothing. <laughs> Come on, y'all, catch up in a minute. <laughs> oh my God, I just got tickled. <laughs> if you got it, somebody would have gave a shout right there. Because you think you're at the end of where you are, where you need to be, and you can't get any lower. This woman said, I can't get any more empty than I am. I have nothing but a little bit of oil. And the prophet was saying, no, you're not empty enough. Now go get some more empty. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> Closet 
and then hang up there in your closet. You can't do that, but God can. That's the kind of God that we serve. A God that is mightier than the universe. So, Amen. go back to your empty house, your empty cupboards, close your doors, and to those two boys that are about to be empty out of your house. I want you to see what God can do Amen. with your emptiness. The story continues because she gets these jars, and she poured it into the empty jars, and they were filled full. And yet her little jar wasn't empty. She filled the second one. She filled the third one. She filled the fourth one. And she filled many more. And finally, she said, hand me another one. And her son said, that's it. There's no more emptiness. Now, when I think about that, I think about two things. I think about how it is that it's a shame that we get to a point that we don't need God to pour into our life anymore. That's true. Amen. That's, that's true. If we ever get to that place that we decide that we don't need to be filled anymore, mm -hmm. that we have all that we need of God, I believe that at that point, we are on a backward slide away from God. Right. You see, no matter where I am spiritually, no matter how empty I feel or how full I feel, I know that I can't get away from God. I know that I've got to be in the presence of God to at least stay where I'm at. I can't just walk away. I'll be right back in my emptiness. I'll be right back to where God brought me out of. He brought me out of the crack house. He brought me out of the bars. He brought me out of womanizing. But I know if I don't stay connected to God, no matter how I feel, that my life will be back in the crack house. My life will be back in the bars. My life will be back chasing the women. Sorry about that, baby. But it's the truth. It's only because that God and I are one and Ellen and I are one. Amen. There's nothing more that Satan wants you to do is to disconnect yeah, that's right. Right. from his anointing. <coughs> Oil. Now, the second thing that God spoke to me about was if we all are filled, then why does he need to move in this service? If there's not a need for God to move, then why would he just move because we want to feel good? What God wants is a church that never stops growing. What God wants is a church that is without walls. That people continue to come in. That we gather in the empty vessels that God can fill it. Let's not ever stop bringing empty vessels in here that God can fill it and fill it and fill it. Do you want to stay filled? Bring somebody that needs to be filled. You want to see miracles? Bring somebody that needs to be saved. You want to see something? so self-focused. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. I'm going to church for me. And some of you have been going to church for you for 20 years. Can somebody do a cricket noise right now? That's a bird. Anyway. Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> But I believe in God is bringing the church to a place <coughs> where he's going to tell us to gather empty vessels. And the more vessels we get, the more we're going to see the Spirit of God fill Amen. these vessels. The more miracles we see, the more transformation we see, the more restoration we see, the more breakthroughs we see, the more healings we see. Because God is a God that will fill those empty vessels. Amen. Now, Amen. notice what happened when there were no more emptiness. In verse 6, it says here in the later part, it says, When all the jars were full, she said to her son, 
Bring me another one. But he replied, there are no more jars left. And what happened? Then the oil stopped kind of flowing. When there were no more jars, there was no more need for the oil to flow. See, as long as you feel like you are where you need to be, and you're not willing to be emptied of everything, God cannot flow in your life. That's right. If we're not bringing people in to be saved and to be filled with the Spirit of God, then God's just not going to show up to entertain you anymore. I really believe that that's where we are in the U.S. where God is not in the entertainment business anymore. He's given America long enough to empty themselves and say, God, it's me and you. No matter what happens to the economy, no matter what happens to my pocketbook, no matter whether or not the pastor likes me or he don't like me, no matter, it's between you and God. And God has given the people enough, enough, enough. And he says that's enough. No more will I entertain the people. It's going to be the real and not the fake. It's going to be those that are empty and want to be filled with a new oil. Amen. And I believe that. With all of my heart. So there's something to say about emptiness. Because when the vessel was full, it stopped flowing. The primary interpretation of how God meets the material and the financial needs of his, per of his people. He's never once failed and never will fail you. He's never once failed me and he never will fail me. If he does, then he's a liar. If God fails you, he's a liar. God never has failed you. He never will fail you. He'll never let you go, nor will he ever let you be plucked out of the hand, out of his hand. Amen. Never will he fail you. Sometimes he'll let you be empty, but he won't fail you. And one of Jesse's favorite sayings is this. He said, God may be the slowest man in the universe, but he's always on time. Because God is not confined by time frame. God is not confined at all. So when you think that it's over, then God can show up and say, see what I did. Because see, if you want to work your way out of it, you're going to get yourself into a mess. And if it looks like you work your way out of something, then you're going to say, look what I did. Right. See, in other words, self begins to take over again. And what God's trying to do is empty people of self where you totally put your trust in God, where you totally put your faith in God. I'm telling you right now, I have been in positions where I said, I don't know how I'll ever get out of it. And God showed me within one month Within one week, within three days, my whole situation turned. And what I thought I could never come out of, God provided for like that. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. At the end of long winters in construction, Dave, you know what I'm talking about. When the work slows down and you, you, you got your last nut out the drawer. And you say, oh dear God, do I eat this nut or do I give it in tithe? You follow me. When you're completely empty and you just have a little bit and you say, God, what do I do with that little bit? If, if I give it away, I'm going to starve. I'm not going to be able to pay my electric bill. I'm not going to be able to eat. I'm not going to be able to put gas in the car. And we decided that we was going to keep it. But the next morning, God's unction stirred in our soul. We came together in the kitchen and said, you know what? We've got to give that $40 of that $400. Even if it doesn't look like we're going to be able to pay our bills, we've got to do it. We can't afford not to do it. So we gave. That Monday, we got a check in the mail. Come on now. Amen. That, that check, we got a check in the mail for a significant amount of money, and it was only a down payment for a job that was coming forth. Amen. Now you you tell me God ain't God. Now I'm not I, before we even decided to tithe, God already decided to bless us. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Some of y'all didn't hear me. We were empty, but God already had. God says, see, if you just move in obedience, if you just do what I ask you to do, 
promise you, I will fill your cupboards. Amen. 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 He's never failed us yet. That's and right. he never will. Amen. Now, you remember John 6? Or we can go back to the widow woman where the prophet Elijah there again. It says that he was going to the city gate. And there was a widow woman at the gate. And she was gathering sticks at the gate. And the prophet said, go and give me some water. And while you're at it, make me some bread. <laughs> now, come on, now you're getting pushy. Ain't that what you would say? Look, I, I was okay with the water, and you demanded that thing from me, but now you want me to go make you some bread too. Who are you anyway? You know what the lady tells him? No. My jars are empty. I have nothing to give. In fact, I'm gathering sticks. I'm going to go home and make that last little piece of bread. Mm -hmm. And then me and my son are going to die. Mm -hmm. There's famine in the land. There's no hope. There's no program, government programs for us to sign up for. It's over. Why are you following me, old man? He said, just do what I say. Just obey me. I'm, I'm a man of God. Listen to what I'm telling you to do. He said, okay. And she went and made flour. Took that last little bit of flour and made him a cake. And every time she came back to that vat, there was more flour. Every time she needed something, she dipped her hand in there and there was more flour. And there was more flour. And there was more flour. So sometimes when you think you're at your end, you're only at your beginning. Sometimes your end is your beginning. Don't ever think that God is going to fail you. When you think it's over, if you just obey God, it's a new time. It's a new day. It's a new dawn. The sun is rising. My God, the sun is rising. My God, the sun is rising. Like the bed. But the sun is about to rise. Woo! Amen. Do you remember in John 6? John 6 is the story of the few fish and loaves of bread. They say that it was 5,000, but when you add the men, the women, and the children, all together, they, they estimate that there would be about 15,000, really. Now, whether it was 5 or 15, but just some people say 15, some people preach a 5, but either way, it's miraculous. Right. Where he took all these empty stomachs, these empty vessels, and told the disciples in John 6, he tells them. He says, after they asked him the question, what are we going to do? He said, you're going to feed them. Could you imagine going on to, you know, Gilligan's Island? I want you to think of this for a second. <laughs> do, 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 do. I got to get you Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Y'all there? <laughs> now I know that when they went out on a three hour tour they didn't take a week's worth of food right. they brought just enough for them to eat snacks maybe a little burger they could throw on the grill or something easy so when Jesus and, 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 and the disciples they went to the other side they didn't go over there with a week's worth of, worth of food they went over there to, to, to get refreshed. And, and is what, what it says. And it said that they had heard of all the healings that God did. They heard of all the miracles that they did. And as, as them and the disciples were floating across the river, you know, that y'all there three hour told me. <laughs> they get to the other side. And here are all these people. They're like, wait a minute. How did you get here? So we heard about you. You see, when God begins to move, we won't be able to maintain. That's right. We won't be able to handle if God would just move and begin to fill people. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where we go, they're going to look for you. Mm -hmm. You got that? Mm -hmm. Whether it's even in business, when the favor of God is on you, it's on you. That's right. Whatever it is. That's true. 
And the disciple said, wait a minute. It would take us, you know how long it would take us? We got $800. I don't have enough money to feed all these people. It would take us months and months to earn enough money to feed these people. And you know what? He only asked them that to test them. They've already seen all the miracles. You guys have seen miracles. You have seen the hand of God move in your life. You have seen the power of God in other people's lives. But yet, our faith is still empty. You're still holding on to your watch, your needs, your selfishness. And God wants you to be empty and say, okay, God, if you say it, I believe it. <laughs> Now talk about if it's biblical. Hear me. Not getting into that right now. But he said it. The word says that he said it to test them. To see where they were. And nevertheless, he filled every empty stomach. We serve a God that can fill every need of empty. Whatever it is in your life, we serve a God that can fill that empty need, that empty spot, the financial, the physical, the joy, the discouragement, whatever it is, whether it's health, whether it's medication. See, the thing is, is that the disciples said, let's just get rid of the problem. You see, that's what Satan wants you to believe. Let's just get rid of the problem. That's the easy thing to do, isn't it? Yeah, right. Just get rid of it. Amen. Well, what kind of faith is that if every time we have a problem, we just want to get rid of the problem? How about taking a problem and saying, God, show yourself in my problem. Show yourself to be God. I'm not going to believe what the tax collector is saying. I'm not going to believe what the creditors are saying. I'm not going to believe what's happening. I'm going to stay the course. We were looking, you know, we've been trying to purchase this place. And things just haven't been working out. And we've been going around to different spots trying to locate something we could, you know, maybe move to or purchase or do whatever. And, and we was in Laurel the other day. And it was it's a beautiful spot right on the corner of 216 and, and five acres. But can I tell you something? The funny thing is is that God just keeps telling us to stay the course. <laughs> to stay the course. God is trying to tell you, stay the course. It, it may seem like your situation is going nowhere and it's empty. I know that. But don't think that you're by yourself. Don't you think that you're the only one and God is saying, just stay the course. Just keep moving. Just keep believing. Keep trusting. Don't change direction. Don't go to the left. Don't go to the right. Just keep going forward. Stay the course. Don't back out. Don't back away. Don't turn this way. Don't turn that way. Just keep the course. Beautiful place. Cheaper than we could even get this. God says, stay the course. Now you think I'm kidding you? We go look around this place, and I mean to tell you, it's got a two-bedroom in-law apartment. It's got a basement that runs from one side of the house to the other. And this is a 6,000 square foot house sitting on five acres. Mm. It's got two master suites upstairs. Five acres put a nice church right there on the corner of 216 and Baltimore Avenue. Yeah. We come downstairs from looking at the upstairs. And there's a lady sitting on the couch here. 
And there's a man sitting on the couch here. And I said, I, 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 all of a sudden I got this feeling, I, I just need to get out of here. And he said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If I wasn't obedient to God, I would pay for it. And he looks at my wife and I, and he says, I don't know why I'm telling you this. But God is telling me to tell you, stay the course. Because where he puts you is where he's going to bless you.
Then all of a sudden they go in, what do you do? I don't know why. But they ask me every time, what do you do for a living? <laughs> what kind of job do you have? I said, I don't work. <laughs> you don't work? <laughs> no. If you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Amen. Well, what kind of job do you have? I say, I'm in the people business. Well, what are you, a counselor? I said, no, I'm a man of God. <laughs> ha! Amen. I'm a minister of God. you should do 
but you don't do it. Mm-hmm. Or something you shouldn't do, and you do it. Amen. 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 So, confessing and repenting of sins doesn't make us deserve God's blessing or His intimacy either. It just helps, us, helps to qualify us to receive it by His grace. But He cannot fill a sinful vessel, a prideful vessel, or it would appear that He condones sin and overlooks sin, and God does not do that. We need to empty ourselves of the things that stop God from filling us with His glory, with His presence, and with His grace. Total and complete surrender and intimacy with Christ go hand in hand. What happens when Christians empty themselves? They are filled with spiritual understanding. John 7 says, If any of you would do his will, full surrender, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God. Why is this so important to me? Because God has been speaking to me through these messages. Because I've been saying, I don't know what God wants. I'm not hearing God. What do, you, do I go this way or do I go that way? And you know, we took time. We fasted. We prayed. You know, we, we spent time. We began to get intimate. We go look at a place. And in that place, God sends a prophet of God sitting in the house to say, stay the course. Sometimes the answer is right in front of you. And it's as simple as you stay where you are. And being content. Amen. Come on now. But our rebellious nature always wants what we want. Self always wants to be selfish. We want to run from the problem instead of embrace it. So this morning, if you're a professing Christian, And I believe everybody here is saved. Has asked Jesus into their heart and confessed their sins and asked God to come into their lives. What God desires is to fill us with a new wine. What God desires to do is to take our hunger and to fill that hunger that we look for so many different things in the world. But He wants to fill you, that your hunger and your thirst after Christ. That there's places in our life that we just have a need and we're saying, God, I don't, when it's beyond just having enough at this point, I need more than enough joy. I need more than enough peace. I need more than enough provision. <laughs> I need more of you, God. If that's you, I want you to come up here this morning that we can pray with you. If you're saying, Lord, I just want to be filled with more of God, that could be a vessel that you work through. I want you to fill me. I want you to use me and send people in my direction to see the lost saved. If there's anything in my life that needs to go, Lord, show me what it is that it can go, that I can enter, uh, have that intimacy with you again, God. Some of you are saying, you know, I've never even experienced that intimacy. But Lord, I want to have an intimate experience with you. I want to be filled with the Spirit of God. Then we want to pray that prayer today. That God will get the glory. Before we do, I just want glory to Shafar. I don't know why I feel like I want to blow this Shafar, but I want to blow this Shafar. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Hold that. You know when the, you know when they would, when they would blow the Shafar, it was a call for worship. I, I just really believe that God is calling us to a place of worship. And whatever the hindrances has been, God's going to remove them when we blow this Shafar. And you're going to feel the presence of God this week like you never have before. You're going, you're going to be in a place and all of a sudden the Spirit of God is going to come on you. And you're going to go, what is that? You're going to know what it is. I believe it. That God's presence and His power is about to be filled. The vessels of this church that we bring in other vessels. That we keep. Have enough room for those that come in. Amen. Amen. Believe it. But you got to be filled. That this church can be 
filled. Amen. Amen. On the count of three. One, two, three.
spot represents herself, God. And Lord, how it is that you have asked, Father God, for her emptiness. But Lord God, that emptiness is only an opportunity to be filled with your power, your spirit, your anointing and provision. Oh! More than enough. Ah, more than enough. 
Ooh, Father God, give her what she needs to fill those vessels, God. Give her what she needs to fill those vessels, God. In Jesus' name. Let it flow. each one that received and those that let out, Father God, those that, Father God, humbled themselves and came before you, God, we ask that you cover them, Father God, as they asked, Father God, let them re receive. Now let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen and amen. God bless you. Don't forget.